Hello everyone, and welcome back to my complete career run through in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. Now, we've completed the tech tree in this series, however, we've left some Kerbals stranded in odd locations. For instance, we've got one in a backwards inclined orbit around Kerbin here. Uh, yep, in a retrograde orbit. And we've also got Jeb over on Mars. I mean, Duna, sorry. Duna, Duna, Duna. And uh, so, so we have to retrieve Jeb as well. We've left Jeb over there for the entire course of the series, uh, at least since uh, he landed there. So it, it, it would be a good time to bring him back. So the plan is, I forget whether it's Bill or Bob here. We've either got Bill or Bob in the Lambda 6, which is going to be the return craft back from, uh, back from Duna. Then, uh, oh, I guess we could... Uh, no, I guess not. Just wondering. I guess it, I guess it must be Bob in here because Bill was the one landing on all these locations. All right. Anyway, so we're going to have to bring him down, and then send him to the return craft with the lander craft. So we'll build a Duna lander that can rescue Jeb. Send that lander with the requisite fuel up to this Lambda Six. And then Bill and Bob will go over to rescue Jeb, and uh, whoever's in the lander gets to actually land on Duna and bring Jeb back. The trick is that we have to get close enough to Jeb on Duna so that we can retrieve him. Otherwise, you know, if it's too far away, it could take hours and that's not good. So, but the first thing is to bring back our Kerbal from the Lambda 4. And so I need to send a mission up to that. So let's go to the VAB and see what kind of mission I'll cook up. Okay, so I'm not going to show the build process on this one because it's uh, very, very simple. It's just, uh, it's just the um, same capsule that we have as Lambda 6 that is currently orbiting. Same exact thing. But instead of having the huge Lambda launcher, I've attached it to a Pi launcher. So this is the Pi launcher with enough fuel to get into orbit and perhaps a little bit further. We'll see. But, um, yeah, so this should be enough, even despite having to put it into a weird inclination and slightly retrograde. I think uh, this should be enough to bring back our Kerbal from that uh, particular pod, the, the tug, it's actually the tug. So, that's, that's it, the Pi 2, and all the staging should be right. Let me check to make sure these are action grouped. Yeah, they are. Okay. That was true of the Pi 1. Uh, yeah, um, was it the Pi 1? No, it's Lambda 6. We had the Pi 1 doing something completely different. Alright, so this will be our rescue vehicle for the one in Kerbin orbit. So let's go out to lo Well, let's pick our crew first. And this is important, we can't have three people in here. We need to at least have one seat free, and I think I'm gonna go with two seats. I'm gonna send uh, Gurdon Kerman. I don't think I've used him much. So I'm gonna send Gurdon Kerman up. Uh, to bring back whoever's in the Lambda 4. Alright, so, uh, yep, let's go to launch pad. Hmm, I sort of wonder if it would be wise to slip in the reaction wheel in here, but I think the gimbling on the engine should do quite a lot. Okay, let me uh, start time warping while we can, because it was going back and forth between physical and non-physical time warp. Um, so we're uh, going to be setting this as a target, and you can see I'm trying to line it up properly. And so what we're going to do is we're going to launch when the Pi-2 and the KSC is under this orbit, as long as it's lined up right. Okay, so I'm going to time warp until that occurs. And you can see the, Pi -2, uh, the Lambda-4 is going behind the planet and it will come back around this way. So what we have to do is we have to burn northwest. So that's important. Okay, I think this is fine. I'm sure it'll be a few degrees off, but uh, that's better than like a hundred degrees off. So it should be all right. Let's go back. All right, still hanging out safe with Gurdon Kerman. All right, SAS is on, throttle is up. And uh, let's just check that nothing broke while we were time warping, no. All right, uh, so off to rescue either Bill or Bob, whoever is in the Lambda 4. Alright, so off we go. I 
I'm gonna give it a little bit of an initial nudge in the right direction towards 3.15ish. Uh, so even though it's not uh, time for the gravity turn, I want to make sure it's started in the right direction. Keep in mind, it has to overcome the rotation of Kerbin itself as well. Normally when you go 90, you're going with the rotation of Kerbin, but now we're going against it. So it's even worse than a polar, polar trajectory. Gurdon looks a little bit worried. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot worried. Hmm. I'm sort of rotating more like I would with uh, Ferrum Aerospace installed. I think I'm uh, rotated a bit too much even now. And you can see we're, we're uh, just now getting uh, north-south and that's because we're uh, overcoming the fact that we're already going towards the east. So we're turning around sort of and rapidly getting our orientation proper. Wow, that was quick. Hmm. Should really have more st uh, fuel on that stage. All right. Well, actually, no. I, I should probably boost a little bit more. Let's continue first and then uh, fix later. Okay. I think we're passing the orbit that I'm looking for. So hold on a sec. Let's uh, look to burn here that apoapsis problem is this point is like the closest point that that orbit actually comes towards Kerbin and it actually ends up quite far out on the other side okay Well, yeah, let me just uh, burn this first. And then I'll correct the rest of the inclination. Uh, maybe I can shade a little bit to the west in order to help with the inclination, but yeah. All right, let's get burning. Sorry to be in this view, but obviously I have to figure out some of this. Okay, let's not use any more of that fuel. And the next node where we can correct the inclination is over here. So let's fix that. And see if working from there we can get uh, some sort of intercept. Doesn't look very promising. I think we need to burn a little bit more prograde right now because our periapsis is still within the atmosphere. So let me do that. Okay, I'm just going to do one thing at a time, I think. Let's correct the inclination first. Well, this is a weird way to correct inclination. Hmm. Seems to be having larger effects on my orbit. This is not right.
think I'm gonna have to go around to find a place to meet up with the other one. See now, this is a little bit more what I would expect from an inclination change. Let's shade here. It's only showing what I should expect afterwards. What is it now? 1.3. Okay, well, I'll leave it there. Now, where could I possibly burn to meet up with this thing? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go around. Well, it's right there. It can't be too far off. Hmm. Oh, we're re-entering the atmosphere again. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, that's actually not uh, horrible, but let's try and mitigate that a bit. Really not very attentive to the atmospherics this time. Okay. That should do just fine. We do have lights on this thing. Might as well get the... Well, we're in the atmosphere, so let's not do the docking port shield until we get back out of it. Okay, now docking port shield, just in preparation, and let's continue. That's a lot to burn for not quite a good intercept, let's fix this. Okay, well, I better go with this because I'm going to lose the node otherwise, and this is the right time to do it. Um, don't know if, how much fuel I have to spare, really, but... This is a surprisingly more difficult mission than I thought it would be. That's us without fuel. Not a problem, technically speaking. Don't know if I should just dump this and just use RCS like that. But uh, let's just start off using RCS here. Oh, wow. This is not good at all. What have I done? Um, we have a solar panel here. That was a major concern. All right, I think uh, we won't have lights, but yeah, let's let's dump the rest of this. We don't need it anymore. All right, so we're a little bit more free, and hopefully our CS will be more useful now. This can't have been the best way to do this. Why is my periapsis going like that? You know what, I need to replot. Okay, wow, 150. No, this isn't good. Wow, this is weird. All right, um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reach apoapsis and boost my periapsis up. And I'm going to look at what the Lambda 4 can do to meet us.
I think we've done enough with this one. Let's have Lambda 4 do some of the work. You can sort of see, as long as we meet up with this, the monopropellant will be able to bring us back into the atmosphere to aero break down. So, I'm not too worried about coming back as long as we meet up with it. Still wondering how I got this wrong. I'm pretty sure it should have been able to make the rendezvous much more easily and with less fuel than I apparently used, so... Well, that'll do. Surprise. Uh, I mean, part of the problem has to be that uh, the target's orbit is so close to the atmosphere. Makes it a bit tricky. Let me get 75 at least. Okay. Alright, let's switch to Lambda 4. Okay, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. There it is. Alright, so let's see what we've got here. We've got some fuel. See, we can't cut ahead though. Because uh, that would bring us into the atmosphere. Hmm. Set its target. Yeah, I mean, you can see our periapsis is going down. All right, so let's um, let's let the other one catch up to us, and then figure out what we need to do. So it's going to pull ahead. Uh, I mean, it's going to come lap us, basically. <laughs> All those huge burns for the other one, but this one only needs to do a tiny little... Well, I mean, of course, it'll have to correct uh, a little bit more once we get there, but uh, seems like we can do a 13.8 meter per second burn to meet up with it. It's just so much harder for the other one to do anything. Point 0.5? Alright. So yeah, I think we can do monopropellant on this for this burn. It's not going to take us in the atmosphere. Nope, should be fine. Next time I really shouldn't have uh, my tug parked so close to the atmosphere. I should have boosted it out a bit more. Of course the problem with this is was just that uh, it didn't have parachutes. Otherwise, otherwise it's worked quite well. And it's actually got uh, some fuel, I mean, uh, substantial fuel, I think, if you calculate the delta V out. Okay, 0.6. Rare case where it's uh, meeting up as advertised. All right. Okay, we need to burn 166 in order to make sure that this actually happens. You can see what I mean by substantial delta V. This might actually have a thousand in it. That last little bit of fuel can really uh, make the difference. And we don't need to burn so quickly. Let's let it approach a bit more. And this is not a case of the 
rescuee becoming the rescuer. Remember, uh, the other one can uh, go head back down to uh, Kerbin's surface at any time. This one can't. Okay, it looks like we're uh, all set on this side. Let's make sure the Pi 2 is facing us. If, ah, there we go. Not the best camera view at this point, but I'm not gonna change it right now. Alright, all connected up. Now let's get... Uh... Okay, well it looks like the crew hatches are pretty much lined up, so that's good. Let's get Bob out and uh, get him back. So it was Bob after all. Alright. Come on, Bob. Now, you all know how much I love EVAs, and... Well, hopefully this will be a short one anyway. Up, 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 up. Oh, I think he got knocked. Uh oh, up, up. Okay, this is bad. Come on, you. Oh. All right. That's fine. Uh, I might as well transfer the rest of the mop pellet out from this. Um. Actually, you know what? I think uh, this can bring us. Yeah, yeah. We can use this uh, since we need to get rid of this anyway. We don't want it hanging out in orbit as space junk. We might as well have the whole entire thing dip into the atmosphere. So let's add a maneuver. Just get enough into the atmosphere so that uh, we are going to get rid of it. A little bit wiggly. Okay. Oops, controlling from the wrong side. Um, here. Very wiggly for some reason. This isn't a very complicated uh, craft. Certainly not as complicated as just having the tug with some of its other partners. Okay, that should be good enough. All right, but we're not gonna go down together here because that would be a bad idea. Hmm. All right. Let's back away. Close that. 
It's just us and our parachutes. Hmm. I, I'll deflect a little bit off to the side just just because I don't even want the slightest possibility that we're gonna smash into each other on re-entry. Alright, Gurdon's Gerdin, looking uh, quite happy now. He was looking very very worried when we were going up but now he's all thrilled. Let's see how he deals with re-entry, shall we? This mission was a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be, but uh, not not anything too dramatic. And then next we'll send Bob up with a uh, lander vehicle and uh, tons of fuel. And have him dock with Bill, bring them over to Duna, and then rescue Jeb. Okay, hey, well, rare to see a mountain range in the daytime. I usually hit them at night, uh, but uh, it looks like we'll fall short of, it, of them, thankfully, so that's good. So this will be the same craft that we used to bring Bill, Bob, and Jeb back after uh, the Duna mission. These guys don't look very happy about the situation, but I, I think uh, this is a good return craft. Alright, I think we're good for parachutes. SAS off. tough to tell where the parachutes want to open so because we're over land and fairly high land probably can't time warp through that point yep there we go uh, 6.6 ish on the resulting velocity, so four parachutes are good. All right, so let's recover the ves vessel. Well, to my own surprise, we actually got 0 0.3 science out of it. The recovery of a vessel returned from Kerbal orbit. I guess we still get points for that? I don't know. All right, but the important thing is, uh, it was a unique mission in that we went somewhat retrograde around Kerbin for the first time uh, in order to rescue Bob. And uh, so it was a little bit of a complicated mission and it's nice to have that be successful. Of course, uh, Bob's weird orbit, uh, including the fact that his, pro um, his uh, periapsis was so close to the atmosphere made it a little bit difficult. But uh, we got through it and now we're all set up to send Bob and then uh, to join Bill and then Bob and Bill to retrieve Jeb from Duna. So tune in next time for uh, probably the first part of the Duna rescue mission. Uh, I think it'll probably be getting to Jeb and then uh, we'll have another episode bringing him back. Uh, assuming everything works out right. Let's cross our fingers here folks. If it doesn't I'll show it to you but, uh, but uh, yeah I'm quite nervous about making sure that everything goes right on that one. So, yep, tune in next time to see how that works out. And uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.